Hello friends, my name is RagePanda1 and today we're going to completely ignore all the negative stuff in the game and we're going to talk about Valley of Conquerors a little bit. You can tell that I haven't uh, been on to play this Valley of Conquerors yet because my team is losing. No way we'd be losing if I was in there participating, am I right? So while this isn't necessarily going to be a list video, I am going to be just focusing on tips here. And my main tip, the thing that's been most successful for me, is to have one big team. And splitting my resources to make many smaller teams just isn't working. I have to be as big as I possibly can be so that I can go crush the enemy and see them driven before me. And also, I've noticed that having a healer on your team can be extremely huge, especially when you come across somebody who is holding one of these gates and they have just a ton of people in there. Like this person already has six people in there. That could start to add up. But I've seen over 20 people in the same thing. And you don't want to be caught in a scenario where you're getting beat just because the enemy team has a lot of numbers. So for positioning, this applies mainly when you have the big team. There are some positions that are extremely strong. One of those positions is these gates. And you want to keep your top team at the top of the gate if you possibly can. Because if somebody comes in and they attack a smaller team and then they attack your bigger team, you're going to say, well, why did I lose to this worst team? And the answer probably is that they already had their ultimates charged up when they came in. And your team got extremely gimped by getting hit with all of those ultimates. And that's probably why you lost. It happens all the time. But another extremely strong position are these nodes here. These are just a basic node, but they're extremely strong for a very important reason. This is the supply line to your entire area from one side of your map. From the other side of your map, you've got this little branching path that splits off in two ways. It's really hard to defend that path. And in fact, I think that this was really well designed. The reason is because if you camp a really strong team at one of these spots, particularly in an enemy area, you can be blocking access from a lot of places. Especially, there's always going to be this corresponding gate right over here, and there's going to be this little octopus with many paths sitting right here. If I hold this path with a very strong team, then maybe the enemy has this gate, maybe they can come through the gate, but unless they can beat the team that is holding this gate, it doesn't even have to be your team, then they can come in here and do nothing because you're blocking them off so well by just holding this one position. So that's a strategy that you probably have seen used a lot of times. A lot of people do it, but not everybody knows about it. And now you are one of the people in the know. Another thing you can do is click on the top left here at global, and this can give you some indication of where your tactics should be. If you're looking at the points per minute of a team, Especially if you're in first place, this is the only indication of who you need to be keeping down because you need to be on the offensive so that you can stay on top. If somebody else starts getting a lot of points, you need to make sure they don't keep getting a lot of points. In this situation, Purple has taken a huge head start. I personally haven't even logged in since last night because I was having a little date with the wife. We went and saw Violent Night. Thank you for asking. And yes, I would recommend that you go see it if you like to have fun. But if you have a big old stick lodged up your butt, it might not be the movie for you. So I know that I need to try to take out purple and purple is up here being a joik, taking all of our stuff already. So with my weaker teams, I want to make sure that I'm going in here taking as much of their space as I possibly can. We see in here, we checked before, they've got an eight and a half million team in there, which is roughly equivalent to mine. But with all of the weaker teams in front of it, I should be able to power through and at least open that gate. Let's see if I have the stones. And make sure when you attack a place like this that you are ready to confirm that you want to keep fighting. It's easy to get totally screwed if you are not clicking that. You get thrown out of it. You waste all of your marching time. You got to wait to attack the place again. It is a whole ordeal. So even though that team was higher power than me, I was able to go ahead and clobber them big time because I already had ultimate charge and they didn't. And that makes a huge difference as to how the game is going to go. Meaning that we have conquered the gate. While I'm looking at it, I'll mention this node that I've mentioned before. This is our grain mill and we want to make sure that we have a champion in there if we can stand to have a champion in there and then we'll get some bread per minute. Uh, I almost never actually get anything from that because I never check back but it is what it is. And right next to it we have this node that gives us a fortitude bonus plus 10% when we have people in there. If we come down to the red team side though 
we will see that they have a chapel which gives constitution. So there is some benefit to going around and grabbing other people's nodes in similar locations. So we can sort everything by level here. And to be honest with you, Diane, I have not kept up my second team. I do have some millions of gold that I could go even these people out a little bit, but it hardly matters. Uh, it is something that I am actually going to do, but it honestly barely makes a difference. This team is not going to be anything glamorous or even good, but it's it's what we got, you know. Now, if I start going up this path and I don't check it out first, I could get stuck. So I'm just going to make sure there's nobody in those first couple until I get to a place where I have some real choice. We're all good here, so we're going to take these back for the team. Little advantage of both here. It takes back our home territory. And it's shutting down Purple, who is just running away with the game. So my team has 2 million power, and we're running into one now that has 650k. When you're viewing somebody, you can look at who they actually have on their team. This is a pretty strong crowd control comp. I don't think that they're strong enough that it's going to matter. So we're just going to go ahead and do the do. Perform a little violence on them, you know. Give them the whole, the old hurdy wops. <laughs> the old... Hurdy wops. You heard it here first, folks. All too easy. And we're just going to go as deep into enemy territory as we can. We don't care if we die. We're just trying to take their nodes for as long as we can take their nodes. And when they inevitably take them back, well, that's just what the game is about, isn't it? So some of you may have been screaming, but the middle is more important. The middle is more important. And you would be correct. However, if I would have broken into the middle here and started taking some stuff, number one, it's going to get taken back really fast. And my team is on the bottom, so I need to be able to hold some stuff for a little bit of time. And also, only my larger team would be making any progress at all. And that's not what I'm hoping to do right now. I want even my little teams that are built of <laughs> just sticks and straw men to be able to crush through there and at least hold something for a little bit, you know? Every single one of these people that's on this team is only leveled up for districts. That's the only reason that I even have any points into any one of them, and that's fine. Because the only thing we're planning to do with them is walk over nodes and change their color. And if we look down to the south in our node here, in our little area here, we can see that there's not much for us to take. We're better off to be taken purple, and we may as well try to take their nodes that they still had in our area on the way. And purple has done us a favor here. They've left nothing and nobody on their grain mill, so we can actually sneak in here and take it. Again, we're not going to keep this for any amount of time, but that's okay. I'm not sure why it's not giving me the node to click on and put somebody into there. Maybe you can only have one in one grain mill at a time, although that was not previously the case, so I believe I've had more than one in at a time before. Regardless, this is giving them a direction that I'm moving them into. They have to respond to that now. And if they don't respond to it, then they're losing out on big resources. It's still only 20 points a minute, but it is actually getting me some grain, and they don't want that. It's double the points of a normal node, and it has added extra benefits. So hopefully, that gives them some direction to move that way, and it makes them less likely to actually make it back into our area. And even though I have one move left on my big team, I'm going to keep them at this node, because this node's much more important. And if my guys get reset back to this node then I can go and do a whole lot more damage into the whole purple area here with my smaller teams as I go. Of course, when I get my stamina back, I'm going to be venturing out with my bigger team, but I may end up landing again on one of these gates. And what some people do, which I don't approve of, is that they would have landed on this gate, they would have clicked switch, taken all of the people out, and then switched all of these people into a fresh team with full stamina, I think that's a scumbag maneuver. I don't blame you if you use it because a lot of other people are using it. The developers have said it's an exploit. I don't do exploits. That's not my jam. I don't feel good about it. But you should be aware that some people are doing it and it's an option you have if it's a thing you're comfortable doing. And of course, we've talked about these middle nodes before. These three nodes that are in the very middle of the map, if I can bring up my, my whole big Valley of Conquerors map here, this middle area is the most hotly contested, and for good reason. That's where most of the points lie, and that's where most of the danger in fighting lies. So if you're looking to have a good time and really just shake it up, be in the middle. That's where the party is. That's where I usually try to go and hang out. I just felt I could do more damage actually attacking the person who's crushing 
the entire thing now. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to convert as many nodes as I would have liked to convert, but that's okay. We laid plans and got ourselves in position where hopefully we'll be able to hold it down and do some more damage in the future. So I've been holding off on doing a Valley of Conquerors guide because I feel like it needs to be perfect. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself about it. So I decided instead, I was just, <laughs> the last thing I need in this game right now is a little more pressure. So I decided to just get it out of the way with a fun video that I want to do in a way that I want to do it. And I hope that some of the tips came across for you and that you learned a little bit of something there. And real quick, I just want to address that I have posted a video on a different game and some people straight up said, peace out, I'm leaving and <laughs> unsubbed. Now maybe it's because they were quitting Bloodline, maybe it's because I posted a new video. But for all of the people that did watch it and have said that they'll support me no matter what game I'm playing, that really means a lot to me because it's extremely stressful as a content creator to make such a big leap. Basically, everybody who's sub to me knows me as a person who is only playing one game, even though that's never what my channel really was. So thank you for allowing me the freedom to explore and have some fun. Speaking of that, you don't need to worry about the Bloodline game disappearing from my channel completely. If that's going to happen, I will let you know about it. I'm not going to have you sit around and wait and <laughs> just wonder what happened to that guy who stopped posting videos. But there may be some days where you don't see a Bloodline video and you see a different game instead. And there may be days when you see both. So I want to thank you for watching. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.